Hi, my name is Trevor Klee, and this is one of my lessons on GMAT Quant. Uh, I've taken this lesson from my book, the GMAT Quant Bible. Uh, if you want a bunch more lessons on quant, uh, including fully explained practice questions, please check out my book. Uh, it's on gumroad.com slash Trevor Klee. Uh, you can also check out my YouTube channel while I'll, where I'll be doing more of these. So like and subscribe if you like this. Anyways, on to intersecting sets. So first of all, how do we recognize intersecting sets? Well, it's whenever sets are intersecting, when we have two or more categories and we're wondering if there's any overlap. Note, by the way, that some resources will call this overlapping sets. I don't like that name, but just so you know. All right, so that's how to recognize it. So what to know about it? So uh, whenever you have two or more categories and you want to count them, but you're worried about overlap, the sets are intersecting. So the most common intersecting set setup is the Venn diagram. So we have two or more categories and we've got guaranteed overlap. Or we, the other setup is the T chart, which is when we have zero overlap. So let's take a Venn diagram setup. 60 students, 20 who take Spanish, 30 who take French, 5 who take both, right? 20 who take Spanish, 30 who take French, 5 who take both. Note, by the way, because I have 20 students who take Spanish, I have 5 who take Spanish and French, so I have 15 who take just Spanish because I have 30 students who take French and Spanish, that means I have five who take both, 25 who take just French. Now, when I add this up, I can just say 15 plus five plus 25 equals 45. If I have 60 total students, I have 15 who take none. All right, I could also do a different example where I need to use a T-chart. Let's say I have 60 students again. Now I have 40 in eighth grade, 20 in ninth grade. I have 20 who take eighth of the eighth graders take Spanish, 15 of ninth graders take Spanish. Note, I have no overlap between eighth and ninth and no overlap between taking Spanish and not taking Spanish. Because I have no overlap between 8th and 9th, and no overlap between taking Spanish and not taking Spanish, I need to do a T-chart instead of a Venn diagram. If I did a Venn diagram, I'd end up with this weird Venn diagram where I'd have overlaps sometimes, no overlaps other times, and it'd be a mess. So, I have 60 students total. I have 40 in 8th grade. 20 in ninth grade. 20 of the eighth graders take Spanish. 15 of the ninth graders take Spanish. So now I can fill in the rest of the chart. If 20 eighth graders take Spanish and there are 40 total eighth graders, 20 don't take Spanish. If 15 of the ninth graders take Spanish, and there are 20 total ninth graders, five of the ninth graders don't take Spanish. Finally, I can say if I have 20 plus 15, 35 students in eighth and ninth grade taking Spanish, and 20 plus five, 25 students in eighth and eighth grade not taking Spanish, then fortunately this adds up to 60 as it should. So one uh, equation that we'll end up using a lot is A plus B mi plus minus both plus nine or E equals total. So the reason why we do this is let's take our example like this where I've got A, B. So you know in a previous example that was Spanish, French. When I'm counting up my total I would do A plus B and notice and then I do plus neither and notice when I get my total I did A plus B plus neither but I double counted this bit in the middle. So now I have to subtract it out once. Some people get confused by this and they're like, well, why don't you subtract it out twice if you double counted it? It's because I did want to count it once. I just didn't want to count it twice. So 
If I have three overlapping categories, I do a similar thing, which you'll get on the most difficult questions. They make you do three overlapping. So like this, so like A, B, C, it's a similar sort of logic. I've got B, I've got C, I've got A. Now look, I've double counted this intersection, double counted this intersection, double counted this intersection, triple counted the intersection of all three. So I do A plus B plus C minus my boats, right? So two minus two times all three. And then of course, plus neither. Because I double counted my boats, which I didn't want to do, so I have to subtract them out once. And I triple counted my middle, which I didn't want to do, so I have to subtract that twice. So we can solve the triple ones that way, or we can label each part of the Venn diagram individually like we did in example in one and label each section and calculate each section as it comes up. So what are my takeaways here? If all categories out overlap, use a Venn diagram, otherwise use a table, right? If, and it's pretty much like, you know, if you're gonna, if you have trouble drawing the Venn diagram because you're like, this is weird, some of my overlaps are zero, you should probably be using a table. Very common equation, A plus B minus both plus neither. You can solve any T-chart by adding. Table, T-chart, same thing. You can solve many Venn diagrams by labeling each part individually. All right, cool. So that's the lesson. So let's put this into use. So a marketing firm determined that of 200 household survey, 80 used neither brand A nor brand B, 60 used only brand A. For every household that used both, three used only brand B. How many of the 200 household survey use both brands? So I, because I have overlap between A and B, this is pretty classic. Venn diagram, A, B, 200 I'm gonna put in my corner here because that's my total. 80 I'm gonna put outside here. 60, I'm going to put uh, up, that's only A, 60 in A, and let's say uh, X is in both, and 3X is in, um, is in just B, right? For every household that used both, three used brand B. So X versus 3X. Now I can do out my math. 60 plus x plus 3x plus 80 equals 200. Notice this is an a plus b minus both plus neither because I've already labeled out my onlys individually. So I get 140 plus 4x equals 200. 4x equals 60x equals 15. And remember, x was my both, so I know my answer is 15. Cool. Now let's try another one. Let me get rid of this because this is going to get really annoying. Cool. On a certain transatlantic crossing, 20% of a ship's passengers held round-trip tickets and also took their cars aboard the ship. 60% of the passengers with round-trip tickets did not take their cars aboard the ship. What percent of the ship's passengers held round trip tickets? Well, remember, this is the sort of thing that I'm not going to have any overlap between like, you can't be have round trip and not have round trip. And you can't have take your cars and not take your cars. So if I tried to do this as a Venn diagram, I'd have a lot of zero overlaps, which would be very confusing. So I'm going to do this as a table. So I'm going to try round trip, not round trip and then car, not car. And I put total, and I put total. All right, so if my total is, let's say, x, um, let's see, 20% hold round trip and take my car aboard the ship, is going to be 0.2x. 60% of the passengers with round trips did not take their cars aboard the ship. 
So let's say my total round trip um, was going to be something like, let's say, R. So this would be 0.6 R, right? Because this isn't the same. 20% of my total passengers did round trip in cars, but 60% um, uh, of my round trip did not take their cars. So 0.6 R. So we can label this as like X minus R, and we can label this as like 0.8 X, right? Um, or sorry, not 0.8 X. So this is gonna be 0.2 X, 0.6 R. Um, so we're saying what percent of my ship did not take um, their cars aboard the trip? Well, I can say 0.2x is the same as if this is 0.6r, this has to be 0.4r, right? So 40% of uh, my 40% uh, of my round trip tickets is the same as 20% of x. So if I say 40% of my round trip tickets the same as 20% of x, I can say 0.2x equals 0.4r. So I can say x equals 2r, right? So if this is r, well, x is going to be double r. Or in other words, x over 2 equals r, which is the same as 50% of x. So we didn't actually need to fill out the whole table here. I thought we would at first. But the key here was that they gave us our round trip tickets that held cars first in terms of 20% of the total number of tickets. And then when we did a little math, we found out that it was the same as 40% of my round trip tickets. So if 20% of my total tickets is the same as 40% of my round trip tickets, then my round trip tickets take up half of the uh, total number of tickets. All right, cool. So that's pretty much it for overlapping sets or intersecting sets. Again, if you're interested in more lessons like these, including uh, fully explained original practice problems, please check out my book, The GMAT Quant Bible, on gumroad.com slash Trevor Klee. Uh, also, uh, please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks.